Okay, you guys, we're going to look at uh, chapter 17 in the dog's book today. So we, I'm starting on page 470. Um, if you could turn there and if you could grab your calculators, as you see, I've got the calculator up on the screen today. We're going to do some graphing and plotting of points and talk about how to work through that. Some of it will be review, but um, uh, maybe some of it will be a little bit different for you. So uh, local fast food vendor, I'm looking at page 470, the first problem, chicken nuggets. Um, it sells chicken nuggets for the following prices, six nuggets for 240, 10 nuggets for 230, etc. So they want me to draw a graph of this information. Okay, so what you can do for that is you can do a scatter plot for this. So, because it's bivariate data, you've got an input and an output. So if I go to stats and I press enter, I get into my list and you notice I've got some stuff in there. So I'm gonna highlight the list, press clear and then enter. Clear and then enter. And then one more time, okay? So in list one, I'm gonna put the serving size. So six, 10, 15, and 24. Okay, whoops. Okay, and then the corresponding price um, with it. So six nuggets cost $2.40. And 10 nuggets cost $3.60. 15 nuggets was $5.10. And 24 nuggets was $7.80. Okay, now a couple things if I want to graph this. One is I need to make sure I don't have anything else in my y equals. Okay, two, I'm going to go to second stat plot, which is above the y equals. I'm going to choose my first plot. I'm going to turn it on by pressing enter on there. The scatter plot is chosen and list one and list two are my X and Y axis, so that's good. Now I'm gonna to go to my window and X was our number of nuggets here. So we're gonna start at zero and we'll go to say 25 because 24 nuggets was the most on there, okay? And I always divide my range zero to 25 by 20. So there's 25 in that range divided by 20. Press enter gives me a number. Why my prices go from 240 to 780. So if I go from zero um, to 10, that's more than enough. 10 divided by 20 is 0.5. And if I press graph, I've got a scatter plot of that, okay? It looks very linear, okay? And so for part A, what is the equation of this graph? All right, well, as you guys recall, I need a couple of things for an equation. I need a slope and a y-intercept. So because it's linear, I'm gonna look at a couple of these points. We're gonna take a look at six nuggets cost 240, and 10 nuggets cost 360. All right, so the very first thing I need to do is calculate my slope. So 360 minus 240, because if you remember, slope is change in y's over change in x's. So if I subtract these, I get $1.20, and 10 minus six is four. Divide those out, you get 0.3, okay? So I know that my equation is gonna be 0.3x plus or minus something, okay? Now, uh, let's just put a number in. Let's put a six in. 0.3 times six is 1.8, okay? Well, what do I do to get from 1.8 to 2.4? I have to add 0.6, and we can double check that that works. If I put in a 10, that's three. Three plus 0.6 is 360. You could test it with the other values um, and you'd get that as well. So what is the equation? 0.3x plus 0.6. And this is review from algebra. You guys should be pretty good at that. B, what is the slope of the graph? Well, that's the 0.3. What is the real world significance of the slope in relation to the price of the chicken nuggets? Okay, so every time I increase the number of chicken nuggets by one, I increase the price by 30 cents. In other words, chicken nuggets about 30 cents per nugget, okay? Uh, C, what is the y-intercept of this graph? That's your 0.6. What is the real world, real world significance of the y-intercept? Well, if you had zero nuggets, it's still gonna cost you 60 cents. So there must be some cost in just producing them. So whether it's the cost of uh, labor or turning on the lights and, and the electricity for the house, for the building. There's a lot of different things that go into that. But there's a 60% fee regardless of how many nuggets you, you purchase. 
D, how much would it cost to buy a serving size of 50 nuggets? Well, I would just need to put a 50 in there, wouldn't I? Okay, so if I go back to my main screen, so I'll hit second quit, and I'm gonna go 0.3 times 50, and then add 0.6, it's gonna be about $15.60 if you were to order 50 nuggets, okay? And you can follow along, they've kind of worked these problems out as you go. Um, and then E, another restaurant sells 13 nuggets for $4.25. And 20 nuggets for $6.75. It says, uh, use the graph to find out whether these are good deals or not compared to the original, okay? Well, if I go back into, let's do, let's do a couple things. Let's go into my Y equals. I gotta just change this back to equal here for a second. And I put, that's 0.3X plus 0.6 in there and I grab it. Okay, so what happens when we have 13 nuggets? So I can just go trace, and I can go to 13. Okay, maybe 13 is outside of my range. So let's go back into window. No, I had all the way up to 25 nuggets, so I should be okay. So graph it, uh, trace. You notice I'm on the plot, maybe that was my problem before. Go up to the line, type in 13. Okay, 13 nuggets would have been 450 in the old deal, so that 425 is a pretty good deal, right? It's a, it's a little bit better, it's 25 cents better. What about 20 nuggets? So I type in 20. 20 nuggets under the old scenario would have been 660, but it cost 675 under that deal. Well, the 660 is a better deal in that case, okay? So there's an example of how a graph can help you through a problem. So that's chicken nuggets, okay? Let's turn the page over a couple pages to international calls. Okay, I'm just gonna erase this here. Okay. Um, this one says, Aletta has friends in both Egypt and Libya. She uses a pay-as-you-go calling card whenever she uh, calls them. Recently, she made three calls to Egypt and two to Libya. The calling cards uh, rate to each country is different, but Libya costs more. We're supposed to determine the fee, the connect fee, and uh, the cost per minute for the two different places. So I'm going to do something similar here. I'm going to go ahead and clear that equation. And I'm going to go back into stat. We're going to put these values in because I don't know which which one goes with which. So I've got 11 calls, 17 calls, 6 calls, 22 calls, and this is just from page 474 here, you guys, and 7 calls, okay? And then the corresponding fees, so 226 for the first one, 457, $1.26, Four forty-six and two oh seven. Okay, so I'm going to go into my window. Okay, so number of calls, the maximum number was twenty-two, so zero through twenty-five is fine for that. Okay, um, cost zero through ten is probably okay as well. So we're going to just go ahead and graph that. And you can see two different scenarios. You've got these three calls that go together, and these two calls here that go together on top. And it did say that she um, made three calls to Egypt and two to Libya. So these three on the bottom are Egypt and the two on the top are Libya. And Libya costs more as well, so that made sense. Okay, so determine the connect fee for each of those. So as I go through there, um, which is which here? Okay, so the top one, the more expensive one here, or um, Libya. Libya was the one that was seven, cost me 207. That's this one right here. I'll just go ahead and put a dot at that one. And 
17 and 457. And that's this one right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and find an equation for this one. So our slope, 457 minus 207 is 250. 17 minus 7 is 10. 250 over 10 is 0.25. Okay, so your function here has a slope of 0.25, so 0.25x, that's your cost per minute. And then I gotta put in a number. So I put in a 17, okay? So 17 times 0.25, or 17 divided by four is four and a quarter. Um, so that leaves me with, so 4.25, you need 32 cents more. So that's gonna be the equation for Libya, okay? Um, What about Egypt? And because it's linear, they say that in the equation, I can pick any of the two points. Um, all of them are linear. So I'm gonna pick the six and the dollar 26, and the 11 and 226, okay? So my slope, 226 minus 126 is just a dollar. 11 minus six is five and you divide those out, you get 0.2. So for here, 0.2x, uh, put in a number, put in a six. 0.2 times six is a dollar 12, right? Let me grab a calculator and just double check here. So 0.2 times six nuggets. Okay, so we're six cents off, so plus 0 0.06 there. Okay, and to double check, let's go ahead and 22 times 0.2 is 440. We need to get to 446. That makes sense. Okay, so I've got two equations here. That gets me started. That's the first thing they asked me to do, and I and I got that taken care of. Now, note that both the Egyptian call rate. Um, that's pretty much all I need to do. I just needed to decide which was more. I could put those into my y equals and see which is which. So 0.25x plus 0.32. And I gotta make this an equal sign here. The second one was 0.2x plus 0.06. Okay, let's go ahead and graph those two. And they match those other lines pretty well. Um, what happened to the first one here? 0.25x plus 0.32. Oh, plus 32. Ah. Okay. All right. There we go. You can see the two different graphs pretty clearly there. All right, let's skip on to vacation. The family family wants to take another vacation. They've decided to drive their van to the destination 600 miles away. If they drive at a reasonable speed, how much time should they set aside for the trip? Plot a graph that shows various driving speeds in miles per hour on the x-axis and driving time in hours on the y-axis. Okay. into here. I'm just going to clear these out. And then I'm going to go into here. If 
Okay, and what we have to keep in mind is we know that distance equals rate times time. So my x-axis, it says here, is going to be miles per hour. That's going to be my rate. But I need my time in terms of rate, so it's a function. Time is going to be distance over rate. Okay, so let's say for rates, let's just pick some. Let's go 10, 20, 30, 40, all the way up to 100. And then I'm going to save you some time here. So I'm going to highlight list 2 in its distance, which was 600, divided by whatever I put in list 1. So I'm going to go second the number 1 and choose list 1 there and press enter. And it's just going to calculate those for me. So I have a little bit of, save a little bit of time. So my window then, I went from 0 to 100. 100 divided by 20 is 5. And then my rates, you know, 10 miles an hour, 600 divided by 10 is like 60 miles an hour. So, you know, to be sure, I'll just go out to 100, but I think it's more than enough. Okay? And we'll graph those points. There we go. Th those are all of your options where the x axis is miles per hour and the y axis is the time. So, obviously, if you want to reduce your time, you have to increase your speed. But up to this point, increasing your speed doesn't save you that much time. This is right here is where you start making a big difference in speed. You know, 10, 20, 30, 40, or 5, 10, 15, 20. From 20 to 30 is pretty big. You know, 60 miles an hour seems pretty reasonable there, okay? So there's, an, there's another example how we can use a graph to help us out. All right, let's skip over to fat content. This one's a little more complicated, okay? Um, we're going to come up with an equation for some of this stuff here, or at least a graph for it. It says, uh, many ads for food indicate either the percentage of fat the food contains to what percentage the fat, uh, food is fat free. For example, an ad might say our burgers are 85% fat free, or perhaps our lean burger is 10% fat. A person reading these ads might assume that the percentage of calories from fat is only 15% in the first case and 10% in the second. But this assumption wouldn't be accurate because the ad indicates the percentage of fat by weight, not calories, okay? Uh, fat has nine calories per gram. Carbohydra carbohydrates and protein only have four. In addition, virtually all foods have moisture content, which has no calories. For example, 2% milk, 2% of the weight comes from fat, is about 89% water. Uh, when the water weight is taken into account, about 34% of the calories come from fat. Okay, draw a graph that shows uh, a food's percentage of fat by weight on the x-axis and its percentage of fat and calories on the y-axis. Assume that this food is 50% water and the remaining comes from carbohydrates and protein. Then use your graph to find the percentage of fat by weight, uh, which one gives you 50% of calories from fat. Okay. Um, and so we can estimate that. So we're going to go back in, oops, stat, enter, um, clear this out. We have a little more calculating to do. The first thing we should do is come up with a, uh, work out an easier, more relatable problem. So let's say that the whole uh, content of the food is 100 grams. So let's work with a nice, easy number. So if it's 100 grams, when I make my XY chart, um, you know, if this is going to be percentage of fat by weight, and I'm looking at page 481 here, the other one is percentage of fat by calories, you know, let's start by putting zero in, okay, and then over here, zero matches up pretty easily, that's, that's no problem. But let's say I put five in here, okay, so five percent of the fat, um, percent of fat by weight is five, okay. So that means that out of a 100 gram um, item, five grams of it would have been um, fat, okay? And since 50% is water, that means that 45 grams is carbohydrates and protein. So five grams is fat, 45 grams is carbohydrates and protein. Well, the fat was 
was nine calories per gram. So that's going to be 45 calories, okay? And the protein and carbohydrates is only four calories per gram. So that's what, 160 and 20, that's 180 total calories, okay? So you have 225 total calories, 45 of which came from fat. So 45 divided by 225 gives you 0.2 or about 20% of your calories coming from fat. Okay, let's look at one more example and then we'll just fill in the rest, okay? So let's say we chose 10, okay? So let's do the math over here. So if 10% of it was fat, so that would be 10 grams times nine, so 90 grams came from fat. If 10 grams came from fat, that, that would leave you with 40 grams of protein at four calories per gram. That's 160. So that's 250 total grams, or total calories, 90 of which came from fat, okay? And so 90 out of 250 is 36% roughly, okay? So now we're gonna move, we're gonna put 10 here. Oops. And then we're gonna put 36 over here. Okay? And then we can keep going in the chart. They've done the rest of the math. The math is the same for the rest of these, you guys, okay? So we're gonna go by fives up to 50. Because it doesn't make sense to go past 50 because 50% 50 of it is, is water. So 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, and 50, okay? And then the percentage is over here, 49.1, 60, 69.2, 90, 95.3, and 100. Okay, now if I want to look at the scatter plot, I gotta tweak my window. So my X went from 0 to 50. Okay, 55, 50 is 2.5. Okay, and then my Y went from 0 to 100%. Okay. So we've got a graph that looks like this. Now, the question here ultimately that they wanted us to ask is they wanted, um, they wanted to know what would give me 50% of the calories, right? At the top of the page, right? Then use your graph to find out what percentage of fat by weight is 50% of the calories from fat, okay? So we went from zero to 100 by five. So five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. 50 comes over to here. We went to zero, zero to 50 by two and a half. So if I look at this five, 10, 15 or so, okay? So if 15% of it is fat, or 15 grams in our case, then it would be 50% of the calories coming from fat, okay? That was a little trickier, a little bit more math involved there, but we got there nonetheless. Okay, one more example, and then we'll uh, get you an assignment. So. Ducks and cows. Farmer Brown has ducks and cows. The animals have a total of 12 heads and 32 feet. How many ducks and cows does Farmer Brown have? Now, we have done a bunch of problems like this before. Okay? So, what we need to do is we need to come up with a couple of equations. If I let X represent number of ducks, and I let Y represent number of cows, okay, there are... 12 heads, and there are 32 feet. Now a duck has two feet, and a cow has four, so now we're there. They want us to solve this by graphing. Okay, so I'm gonna do a couple of things. I'm gonna go back in, and I'm gonna go down and turn my plots off. Okay, so I don't need to worry about that. And then I'm gonna go into my y equals, and we're gonna graph 
these two equations. Now I need to solve for y to do this. So if I solve for y here, I get 12 minus x, okay? And then if I solve for y here, I'm gonna let the calculator do the, the math here. So 32, I'd have to subtract 2x, and then I would have to divide by four. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna put. And my window, we're talking about ducks and cows, and there's only 12 heads. So you know, if I go from zero to 20 for both of these by ones, I should be uh, more than good. Okay, now I'm gonna graph it. Okay, what I'm really interested in is where they cross. And if I go up to the calculate menu, I can choose intersect, number five, and first curve, enter, second curve, enter, guess, enter. It says the intersection's at eight. So when there are eight for X or eight ducks and four cows, that's the scenario we're looking at. Okay, so we'll stop there for today. Um, get you going on some problems and then I'll do a couple more for you tomorrow. Thanks.